Ni Hao YouTube. I'm currently at the Shanghai Watch Fair. I've been here for the past few days and I've had an absolutely amazing time. I've met some fantastic people, um, not just uh, the stall ho uh, holders, but um, other people who have come to the fair and uh, it's been fantastic. I highly recommend uh, going to a fair if you're a, if you're a watch nut like me. Uh, and you get to keep, see some fantastic watches uh, and a lot of prototypes as well. Uh, one of my favourite, um, I, I guess favourite brands in China is Siegel. Uh, and I spent a lot of time at their uh, stall. Um, and I got talking with um, one of the uh, the girls there. Uh, and she very kindly offered to sell me this watch. Uh, and sold it to me at a very, very good price. Um, literally um, a third of the price of what uh, what you'd buy at retail. Uh, so I haven't used it yet. Um, I've literally just got back um, to my apartment here in China. Uh, so I thought I'd do a quick unboxing of it and then I'll wear it throughout my time here. Uh, and then I might do a review when I get back to England or I might do it while I'm still here in China. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, but um, it comes in this, I quite like this, it's very simple, elegant brown box. Uh, there we go. It uh, comes with the Siegel manual. Now, this is all in Chinese, obviously, because I'm in China and uh, it's mainly for the domestic market. Uh, so it's not really a big issue. The watches are quite self explanatory, I think. Now, this is, they call it the um, Chinese military watch. This is a, a re edition of one of their uh, classic uh, military watches. Um, they did have another one, um, it was a black dial one, out. and um, I didn't go for that one, uh, it was a black PVD. Um, I much preferred this one because it's more in, in line with the original uh, military watch. And it comes on this uh, green nylon strap with uh, leather backing, which is quite nice, um, I do like it, but I'll probably change the strap uh, and use maybe uh, a a leather one or something. I'm not quite sure yet. I'll I'll see. Uh, but yeah, I really like the watch. I will go into more detail in the review um, after I've worn it for um, a week or two. Uh, so stay tuned for the rest of the review. Uh, so this is just a quick unboxing to show you what it looks like. I've had the watch now for about four months. So I'll go into some specifications. So first of all, the, the full name of the watch is a Siegel D813. 581 Chinese military watch type 99 tank commander which is quite a, a large uh, name the watch is uh, themed on which um, I assume is the type 99 tank uh, now the case is made from 316 L stainless steel and it's 44 millimeters wide uh, and 47 with the crown and it's 13 millimeters thick so it's Quite a thick watch and it's 51 millimeters lug to lug which is a really big watch now if you compare that to um, my big pilot so it's a fairly similar size to it so you can see it's a big watch and next to it you've got the the seagull um, 1963 pilot's watch which looks like a, a dwarf compared to the the other two the watch runs the uh, in-house Seagull Automatic ST2553, uh, which is hacking and hand winding. You can see it just hacking. For those of you who don't know what hacking means, hacking is when you pull out the crown, it will stop the, the second hand so you can set it precisely. Uh, so if you pull it out two clicks, it will uh, stop the watch. And if you pull it out one click, you can change the date and the date's got a really nice crisp feel to it when you when you turn it I don't know if you can hear it I can hear it so it's very accurate um, the movement one of the things that I don't like about the movement it's incredibly loud the the wheel if you can hear that it does sound like um, a bag of nails sometimes which is quite annoying. The watch has a solid screw down back case um, with, uh, I, I assume, uh, the Type 99 tank, uh, which is engraved on the back. And it's got um, some inscription there which uh, it says, Jung Guo Renmin Jifang Jin Lao Jin, 
which uh, translates to Chinese People Liberation Army. Now, on the rest of it, it just has 50 meters, and then it has the uh, D813581, which is the reference number of the watch. Now, I actually prefer to have a solid case back, um, unless the movement is something special. A lot of uh, companies now are just throwing in um, see-through case backs just for the sake of it, which is a real shame. Uh, you'll have something, just a, a basic ETA movement. Um, you have something like an IWC um, 5001, which has, I think, one of the most nicest looking um, movements there is. Uh, same with most uh, Patek Philippe's and stuff like that. I can understand you can have uh, so, uh, sorry, um, see-through case backs, but uh, if it's just a standard case back, um, I would much rather have engraving, and I'm, I'm pleased this has just got an engraving on it. It has these uh, very interesting looking crown guards, uh, they've got this sort of chopped off angler look to them. Um, I quite like them, uh, they're different, uh, unlike most other um, watches they'll have all the same type of smoothed off edges for the crown guards. Uh, the crown itself is a polished edges to it with um, the Seagull logo. It has these riveted edges which is really nice to grip when you're winding it. On the other side of the watch You've got this inscription, which translates to Chinese Military One Watch. The finishing on the case is really well done. The whole watch is brushed all the way around, apart from certain parts of it, like on the lugs. You can see there's a polished line all the way around. And then also, on the just on the edge here, you can see that it's polished. They've done a really good job. It gives it a really high-end feel to the watch. Now the water resistance is only 50 meters, which is quite odd. Um, I don't know why they didn't make it 100 meters, but I guess because it's not uh, supposed to be a diver's watch, they didn't really um, care about uh, putting in a screw-in crown or making it 100 meters um, water resistant. But I would have liked to have it uh, at least 100 meters. But I've got other watches which are 50 meters and I've gone swimming with them and not really had any issues with um, water getting inside. The dial is a classic military green which has the, the retro Seagull logo at the top and just the name Seagull. Uh, it's with this, I quite like this really, it's got a vintage beige color to it, uh, which is really nice, I, I like it. Uh, and underneath you've got uh, automatic Chinese military watch since uh, 1964. And then at the bottom it says uh, China made. The hour minute hands have these really nice uh, sword shaped hands which I really really like um, but the one thing that niggles me is they haven't loomed the entire uh, two hands if you can see um, at the bottom of them they I've, I've no idea why companies do this I mean it really annoys me um, it has put me off quite a few watches that um, have got this same sort of thing uh, a lot of other companies have started doing this I, I have no idea why um, it just makes the watch look unfinished, to me anyway, it makes it look unfinished or uh, like the, the the bits have dropped out. Um, I just don't like it. Um, the B50, which, the Breitling B50, which I was going to buy, but the hour hand has a similar thing where it's missing at the bottom and I just, I just can't, that, that just niggles me. Um, I've got over it with this watch because I just love the shape of the hands of this one. I wish they'd had um, loom all the way through, um, but they didn't, but I've got over it. The the hour index, um, I, they've got these raised, and you can just see it kind of gives it a 3D look to it, uh, and I really like that. Um, they are fully loomed, um, as, as well as the, the side hour markings. Um, the loom on this watch is not the best. Um, it glows quite brightly, but then after a few hours, it'll just sort of die down, and then it'll be almost you can't see it at all by maybe three, four hours. Um, so I wish they'd put better loom on the watch, but again, it's not something that uh, affects me too much because I don't really look at it too much at the night time. The watch came on this uh, green canvas strap with uh, leather backing. Uh, which is really nice quality actually. It's uh, you, you, most watches that come with these lot of cheapish uh, uh, straps, but this one um, is quite nice. It's got the Seagull logo on there. As you can see, I haven't used it. It's still got the tags on it. 
and it's got the seagull brushed uh, stainless steel buckle and it's uh, I believe it's uh, tapers down to 22 uh, the lugs of this watch is 24 and I've put it on various other straps and uh, I like the ammo type strap um, and I think it suits the watch really well so I probably won't be using uh, the green one that they've supplied with it I'll keep changing the straps um, at the moment I've got it on this uh, ammo with the sort of a pearl white uh, stitching which I think goes really well with the uh, the hour markers uh, and the hands they sort of match together the watch has a sapphire crystal uh, but it's not uh, got any anti-reflective coating on it which is a real shame I wish they again they did they'd done this uh, it reflects just about everything the light when the light hits it um, you can just see here in the uh, my light box it's reflecting the camera um, and it's just if they'd done it it would have been much better but there's a lot of other companies which don't put um, anti-reflective but to be honest there's no reason not to do it um, the expense can't be that much uh, and if it is then put put another twenty thirty dollars on top of the watch you know I think it'd be well worth it now the price of this watch uh, it retails for 3,200 yen now um, that converts to about I think four hundred dollars um, or about four hundred and fifty dollars uh, and about maybe f just under four hundred pounds now I paid one thousand yen for this now that's yeah an incredible deal which works out about maybe just over a hundred hundred and twenty hundred and thirty dollars um, and just over a hundred pounds now I was really lucky to get at that price um, that was mainly because uh, I got chatting to the people at the uh, the Seagull uh, display and we just tear it off really well and they offered it to me at that price. Um, I did say at the beginning of the thing they had a black one as well but uh, the black PVD I just didn't like. Um, I'm not a big fan of PVD uh, and I, I like this one a lot better. Uh, but yeah, so a fantastic deal. I just couldn't let it go. They did actually offer me the black one as well for the same price but I didn't really want um, uh, two watches almost exactly the same. Uh, and they did have some tourbillons there. Now, um, I'll put up some pictures of the tourbillons. And I was, I'm not a fan of tourbillons, um, but wow. Um, for the price they were offering these tourbillons, uh, they were offering it to me for just under £3,000, which is what, about $3,500? For a tourbillon, um, so I was really close uh, in buying it, but uh, I, I'm not a big fan of open case. Um, I mean, all tourbillons have the open case where you where you can see the inside, but I don't like that. I think if it had a closed case, I know some companies are now starting to do closed cases. Um, I, I probably would have bought it um, for that price. It was just an incredible deal. Um, I'm going um, to do some reviews on their tourbillons. Um, I've been in touch with them back and forth while I've been in China and when I've come back. They've um, invited me to go to their, their factory. So I'm going to go to their factory, um, not on my next trip, but probably the trip after. Um, so I'll do a, a tour of the factory, which uh, if anyone's interested in that, um, that'll be coming up probably in the next six months or so, which I'm really looking forward to, to going. This is now my second Seagull, uh, and I really like the, the brand. Uh, one of the reasons is is um, the exclusivity of the watches. Um, they are quite hard uh, to get hold of outside of China. Uh, some of the models you can't get um, unless you are in China. So it's one of those things where uh, you go to most, if you go out and about, a lot of people have the same watches, they'll have an Amiga or they'll have a, a Tag or a Breitling or something. You don't see many people wearing seagulls, so I quite like the fact that um, there's not many people um, who have this watch, uh, and indeed most of the seagull watches. Now, I have ordered uh, another one, so I'm hoping to pick that one up uh, next uh, next trip in uh, a few weeks' time, uh, and I'll do a review on that one and, uh, when I get it back. Um, but yeah, I really like this watch. It will stay in my collection for the time being. Um, no plans to sell it um, and it's not one of those watches where I'm going to say no it's absolutely going to stay in my collection forever and ever 
1963, which um, I showed you earlier, that one probably will stay in my collection forever. I really, really like that watch. There is a review coming on that um, in the next uh, few weeks. Um, but that one, I just think, is a fantastic watch. Um, I do like this one. It has the niggles, uh, again, the hands, the, the noisy rotor. If that's something you can get past, um, and it uh, the, the size of the watch uh, doesn't uh, put you off, uh, I would say if you can get hold of one, buy one. Uh, there are a few websites which uh, you can buy from. Uh, there are some websites where um, I know a lot of people don't want to be using uh, because they're... they're they have no idea where they are, uh, but uh, if anyone needs any help buying a seagull um, and they need any advice, let me know uh, and I'll be more than happy to help you out. Thanks for watching.